Hello there, Daniel King reporting on Game 9 of the World Chess Championships. Question was today, how would Gelfand react to his devastating loss in the previous game? Today he had the white pieces, let's take a look. He played d4 and Anand was the first to spring a surprise. Not the Slav today, but instead he went for e6. Now we could have a Queen's Indian or a Nimzo Indian. Gelfand chose, well, the solid main line, the so-called Rubenstein variation. And we had a very well-known position arose. Here, black has many different variations, but Anand chose the absolute main line. He took on c4 and then created this isolated pawn. So it's um, an unbalanced position, but very well known indeed, well known theory. And in fact, Anand had this exact variation in the World Championship match against Topolov two years ago with the white pieces. So, yeah, he should be familiar with this. But that was what was so disappointing. In fact, he got the opening wrong. He admitted afterwards that he messed up the opening. Here, for example, he played rook c8, and I think, you know, he was kind of hesitant in the opening. It was really curious. I don't quite understand what's going on. You know, you'd think he would have prepared this very, very well. Here, for example, bishop c3, I think, is a very reliable move, and then playing queen c7, and these are very typical positions. Karpov was one of the pioneers of this kind of system with black. So you take control of these diagonals and sometimes you even threaten knight g4 and well okay I think that's the best continuation for black. Anand played rook c8 also not a bad move and he took on c3 and then played queen c7 I think he could have had an improved version of this and here I thought Anand's reaction was was very nervous indeed he took on f3, just giving away the two bishops, and I thought that was an extraordinary decision. He, to my mind, he did not need to do that. I think, for example, a good continuation would be to play h6, the bishop comes back, and, and now maybe knight h5, or possibly queen f4, with the idea here, and, you know, the queen is active, you know, maybe we're threatening to, to double pawns here. I think this is an interesting way to play. But after bishop takes f3, there's no doubt that black is worse. Now, normally in this variation, if you play bishop takes knight, you normally get in e5 very quickly, and the idea is to break up white's pawn front here. The problem is, if you do this, this allows a very strong move, bishop f5, and those bishops just cut through black's position, and that's very unpleasant indeed. So Anand hesitated, he waited, he played rook e8, so perhaps he was preparing e5, but he's, he's having to wait in this position. So white is just better here. Rook d1 came, h6, bishop h4, and now he played queen d6. Now that's quite a clever move. It's funny, after this rather hesitant opening, Anand, in the rest of the game, I have to say, played with clarity. And queen d6 is an interesting move. Now white could wait here, but it, Gelfand played a very tempting move, and that's c5. Thing is, black has to plunge in for this uh, for a queen sacrifice now. If you play a move like queen d5, then I think white can take, and suddenly the bishop's coming to b5. Even c6 is very, very strong in this position. In that position, the, the two bishops really do come into their own. So, b takes c5, this was always Anand's intention, and he went in for this very quickly. And the point is this, rook c5, and now white wins the queen. But Anand saw this, because he realised this might be his best chance to make a draw. What he's going for is a fortress. Now, there's no doubt that white has winning chances here but it's very hard to break down black's position. Let's see what happened. Okay, first of all, we have to solve the traditional problem of the back rank, so that gives the king a square. So, although you can attack the queen, well, for example, here, if you play rook c2, then the queen can, can just run here, and then black has to exchange anyway. And, of course, you can't take the pawn. There's a, 
is a nasty check. Don't forget that king on h7. That's pretty nasty. So basically, Anand has to choose a fortress here. How does he set up his pieces? And he chose clarity again, knight g6. Now the point is that the bishop can't retreat. In this case, that is very annoying because the a-pawn drops, and that's just a draw. There's no way through. So Gelfand, in this position after knight g6, had to exchange bishop for knight. Well, I don't think he was too unhappy about that because, of course, he's managed to break up black's kingside pawns to a certain extent. And Anand wasn't too unhappy because he's got rid of a bishop, you know, he simplified more. Now, if Anand plays actively with the rook, he'll lose. He'll have, he can't hold everything together. Anand just has to sit there with black. So only two results are possible in this position. Either Gelfand wins or Anand draws. So how do we make progress? Well, Gelfand explained his aim after the game. He said, I have one weakness to attack here. So black is tied to that. The rook has to defend it. My aim was to create a second weakness on the king side. So let's see how he does that. Well, first of all, okay, that threatens the pawn, and now a4. And basically, he's just putting his pawn on a6, and that fixes this weakness. And if that ever drops, then the pawn is very close to the queening square. So that's good play from Gelfand. This is called the squeeze. So he can take his time. Anand, in the meantime, has redeployed his knight to a good square on d5. Now, king h7 and queen d4. Okay, this takes away squares from the rook and, of course, keeps an eye on the a pawn. Good move. So it's still that there are, it's very hard to know how to attack here. g4 is also possible. It's another way of playing the position. Um, I mean, really hard to know which is best. But anyway, let's crack on with the game. We've got quite a few moves to get through. Queen d4 plate, I think a good sound move. Now, Anand had a tricky choice. Does he wait with king g7? Or does he push forward? He chose to push forward. Now, at the time, a lot of people were criticizing him for this move. As it sort of weakens the e5 square, maybe opens up the position a little bit. As Anand said afterwards, he simply didn't know which fortress to go for here, whether he should push or not. It's, but I tell you one thing he was doing very well, and that was moving quickly. He was making these decisions very quickly. I think if you allow yourself to slip into time pressure here, then defending this kind of position is almost impossible. So Anand was at least being decisive here. In fact, Gelfand ran short of time. Let's see what happened. F4. Now that is a very committal move indeed. The point is that Anand now has access to the e4 square and that saves him. It looks very nasty to allow white's queen in here but in fact that knight covers these squares, um, g8 of course especially, and the knight has access to e4. That's very very important indeed. Gelfand just played around with the queen um, but he wasn't really getting anywhere. Now h5 from Anand and I thought this was a mistake because, well, we'll see why in a second. It basically weakens this square. I thought this would give Gelfand access into the king side, but Anand had it all calculated. Let's see. King h4. Now, this is dangerous. Let's see what the plan is. And now I thought the queen e5 would be strong, but it turns out that there are enough resources. Okay, the threat. It's queen g3 check. Oh, so, okay, so we play knight e4. Now queen f3. Threat queen h5 check. Okay, we defend the pawn. And now I thought this was winning. Queen g5. And after the, the knight is dislodged, then we take on h5. It turns out even that's not clear. But, okay, I'm, I'm going to go back. In fact, black would be all right here. But let me show you a really convincing way for black to draw this position. The basic idea is after rook d8 you can allow white to take on h5 and the problem is the king is stuck at the side of the board. There's no defense to rook h8. 
Um, there, there's even another defense here, rook d2. Now there's a very funny variation, I've got to, sh got to show you this. Again, queen h5 check, you can allow this. And black is in time to bring the rook to h8 with devastating effect. And there's a funny variation here, in fact white can still draw. Um, queen b3, and after rook takes pawn, there's an amusing draw, and that is stalemate, <laughs> curiously. So this position should be a draw. But basically that is the critical variation, and because this doesn't work for white, Anand is able to draw, and he had calculated this out. Okay, so queen b2 came, and king g6, well basically here, you know, it was quite clear from Gelfand's body language that he realised he didn't have anything. But he tried one last idea, so black is just sitting there, everything's defended. He tried g4, and I have to say, all credit to Gelfand for giving it one last try. He almost got there. Let's see what happens. If knight g4, then queen g8 wins, queen g5 picks up the rook, so Anand has to play takes. But now a very safe move indeed, knight g8. That just keeps everything protected, everything covered. The knight covers these squares. That's very important. And, okay, Gelfand picked, up, picked back the pawn. Well, after f6, there's really nothing that white can do. Uh, you know, ev everything is defended here. Look. And white simply can't break through this. Let's have a look. Queen back. King here. And in this position, they actually agree to draw. You might... You might try king h5, but, well, let's see. I don't think that there's, there's not really much to do here. King f8, for example, and you, you can't even move in with the king because of check. The king has to go back again, and we can just wait. There is absolutely nothing to do here. You, could, you, might, try, um, you might try queen b7. Now, we're not going to take that, but if black waits, there's nothing to do. So, the game ended in a draw. A gruelling fight, really gruelling. I think both players will be absolutely shattered after that game. So, we go into the tenth game tomorrow, three games left. Anand has the white pieces in two of those last three games. So, on paper, Anand must have the better chances. However, unless he shows a bit more sparkle, I think we're heading for tie breaks.